Hey, future respiratory therapists, we're going to talk today about respiratory acidosis and how it presents on a blood gas and when you need to be in tune on how to act on it. Okay, so how do you interpret a blood gas? Well, we know that when we're talking about arterial blood gases, that we're talking about really three main factors. We're talking about pH of the arterial blood. We're talking about partial pressure of CO2 in the arterial blood. And we're talking about bicarb in arterial blood. Now, today we're just focusing on respiratory acidosis. So we're just going to talk about the way this looks when the respiratory system is failing and when the respiratory system is causing an acidosis in the body. Okay? So, I have up here pH and I have absolute normal, 7.40. Now, you know and I know that normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Okay? If you don't know that, you need to know that. Okay? So, I'm going to work from 7.40 but we know that the range is 7.35 to 7.45. Now, arterial partial pressure of CO2 or carbon dioxide is absolute normal as 40. Normal range is 35 to 45. And we know that bicarb, absolute normal is 24. And range is 22 to 26. Some texts vary on this, but we're going to go 22 to 26 for the sake of this lesson, okay? So, this is normal. Now, when we talk about a respiratory acidosis, we're talking about something that pushes the pH down. And if we say respiratory, we're talking about a buildup of CO2, a buildup of carbon dioxide that will eventually push the pH south of normal, okay? So, if CO2 goes up to 50, okay, and bicarb stays the same, then what's going to happen is, is that your pH is going to go down. So let's just call this 730. Now for all you super RT students out there that want to Henderson Hasselbach me right now, go ahead, I don't care. I'm just giving you numbers to play with, okay? So 730, CO2's gone up that has pushed the CO2, the pH in the opposite direction. Now you gotta remember that. Or it, it, when you're learning how to interpret blood gases, if you remember that carbon dioxide pushes pH in the opposite direction, then you'll be in a good shape. A lot of people like to use arrows. So pH down, CO2 up. I, I don't teach arrows because arrows teach you to learn arrows. And I want you to learn the system at play, okay? So I'm not teaching you to pass your boards. I'm teaching you to be a quality respiratory therapist. Okay? So as carbon dioxide builds up, that's an increase in acid. Your pH will go down. So as CO2 goes to 50, pH goes down to 7.30. Now, where we have this right here, we would call this an uncompensated... respiratory acidosis okay I shorthand it there just to save room okay that's uncompensated respiratory acidosis now I'm going to do another video that goes into advanced ABG interpretations where we'll, in, we'll, we'll, we'll build off of this and we'll say okay uncompensated respiratory acidosis is also known as acute ventilatory failure and that should make sense because if we're talking about acute then we're saying it's uncompensated. And if we're talking about ventilatory failure, then we're talking about respiratory acidosis. Okay? Now, there's a step beyond this that takes us to our next level of interpreting respiratory acidosis. And what that is, is, is if the body stays here long enough, then your CO2 will stay at 50 your bicarb will start to go up. Why is your bicarb going up? Well, it's going up to pull your pH back up into normal direction, into normal range. Okay? So remember, carbon dioxide pushes pH in the opposite direction. Bicarb pulls 
pH in the same direction. So as the body stays here long enough in this uncompensated state, it will eventually start to compensate. So as we do that, then your bicarb will increase, let's say to 28, okay, just to make it simple. And your pH will go to 733. So you have a pH of 733, a CO2 of 50, and a bicarb of 28. Now, when you look at this, you need to be telling yourself, okay, something is causing, something is causing the, the arterial blood to be acidotic. What's causing it to be acidotic? Well, a CO2 of 50 will cause an acidosis. Uh, a bicarb of 28 will actually cause an alkalosis. And so what's happening here is the bicarb is actually trying to pull the pH back up. And we call this a partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Now some will call it a compensating respiratory acidosis. Some will call it a partially compensating acidosis. It doesn't matter what you call it. Understand what's happening in the body. The body is compensating for the respiratory acidosis and it's doing so by raising the bicarb level, by retaining bicarb to try to bring, bring the pH back into normal range. Now from here we'll take it a step further. CO2 stays at 50 Bicarb will continue to rise, let's just say to 30, until pH resumes to a normal range. Remember I told you 735 to 745 is normal? That's where the body likes to be. That's where the body will try to compensate back to. Okay? So when we see this, then we know we're looking at a fully compensated respiratory acidosis okay so we've gotten the full gamut here we've covered every aspect of respiratory acidosis it can be uncompensated meaning the bicarb hasn't moved at all and this is an acute situation that we need to deal with right now if left unattended the bicarb will eventually go up and as it goes up we would call that a partially compensated. Now notice how the bicarb is up, but the pH is not in normal range yet. That's what makes it partially compensated. That's what makes it compensating, okay? Is the fact that the bicarb is starting to compensate, but it hasn't fully compensated yet, okay? And then on the last column here, we have 7.35. 50 50 on the CO2, 30 on the bicarb. The bicarb has raised to a level that has fully compensated for the CO2 being elevated and has brought our pH back into normal range. This is what we would call compensated respiratory acidosis. Now you rarely see this unless you're talking about COPDers. Okay, your emphysematics, your COPDers, they live like this. They live in a compensated respiratory acidosis state. And that's why we would call this one in an advance, which is going to be another video, but I'm going to give you an insight to it right now. We would call this chronic ventilatory failure. Chronic because the patient chronically lives with a higher CO2, their bicarb chronically stays higher which chronically leaves them at a pH in the normal range, but on the lower end of acidosis, okay? So we have acute ventilatory failure here, we have partially compensated here, and we have chronic ventilatory failure here, okay? Those are the three stages of respiratory acidosis. If you have further questions or need further clarification, leave me a comment below. Love to hear from you. Hope you're doing great.